Let me first start by thanking uh, Nicolas, of course, for the presentation. Uh, it is a great honor for me to be here today at the first ever Invest in Cyprus Forum organized by Capital Link. Uh, I have to say that the event organized uh, some weeks ago in Cyprus, uh, the first ever shipping event in Cyprus from Capital Link, was quite successful as well. And I would like to thank Nicolas for basically all his dedication to this uh, kind of events. Of course, Cyprus has been an EU member since uh, May 2004, offering a lot of advantages to investors and trade and, and, and partners. Some of the greatest advantages include its strategic location, an attractive legislative and operational shipping infrastructure, a solid and efficient tax framework, and an excellent communications network. All these, of course, have made uh, the island one of the most progressive and efficient business locations in Europe. Despite the, uh, the international adverse economic conditions and the financial difficulties that our country has faced uh, during the last few years, Cyprus shipping has managed to maintain its competitiveness and perspectives. And this, of course, is due to combined efforts from both the public and private sector. The private sector, I would like to thank them for their strong support of the shipping sector in Cyprus. And shipping has, in fact, evolved during the recent years as one of the leading sectors of our economy, navigating Cyprus to recovery. Cyprus shipping, of course, is not only a registry, um, and uh, it does include a vibrant maritime cluster, with ship owning and ship management, of course, as its core activities. Nowadays, Cyprus is considered uh, one of the Actually, it is a top ship management center in Europe and one of the top in the world. And 5%, uh, it offers services to almost 5% of the world's fleet. The presence of ship owners has also grown, and we hope that this will continue in the next few years. So we've always had uh, a strong presence of ship owners in Cyprus, but during the last few years, we have seen the number increasing, and also we have seen an increase in the ship management activities. Now, of course, uh, our cluster includes uh, several companies, uh, so it's not only ship management and ship ownership, but includes brokerage, financial services, equipment supplies and telecommunications, port services, transshipment operations, ship bunkering, and of course an encouraging uh, sign during the last few years is the recent interest from a number of companies to relocate in Cyprus, including some of the largest P&I clubs in the world. Actually, the American PNI Club uh, started operations in Cyprus last year, and that was a great addition to our cluster. I'm really pleased about this because, uh, at the end of the day, what we were say compared to some of the other registries is that uh, Cyprus is not only about registering ships, but it's also about uh, having a lot of uh, shipping operations. And of course, the more companies that come to the island, the more the cluster expands as well. And I think uh, this is a key thing for somebody who wishes to start operations or relocate operations somewhere in Europe. Of course, shipping, it is an invaluable asset uh, for our economy with uh, significant political and economic advantages. I mean, our registry currently is the third largest within the European Union and the 11th largest in the world. We have a high quality flag, and this is something we're proud of, especially after joining the European Union. Uh, we are included in all the white uh, registries, of course, and this is quite good for the people who have uh, ships uh, registered uh, in our registry. We do offer a wide range of fiscal and economic incentives, including, of course, uh, competitive ship registration costs. I think the panel will uh, uh, expand more on this. Uh, what I can say um, for our government is that during the last few years, we have taken a lot of initiatives because we do believe in shipping. We consider shipping to be one of the third main sectors of the economy, along with uh, financial services, tourism, of course. Uh, shipping is the third one. Hopefully, we're going to have the fourth one, which is going to be the oil and gas. Maybe it would be the largest one. Let's see. Um, we're going to see over the next few years. Uh, we had a very interesting panel before. Um, what we have done during the last uh, few years, we have become much more aggressive in promoting uh, uh, our uh, shipping product. I have to say that um, shipping has always been very successful in Cyprus. At the end of the day, we're an island. Uh, we have always maintained a strong presence in shipping in, in various forms 
Um, uh, we have always had a large registry, and then of course we had the evolution of the cluster with uh, a lot of uh, uh, German ship owners coming to Cyprus to start operations, a lot of Greeks. And, and I have to say that we're really grateful towards these people because uh, these are the people who actually made uh, the Cyprus shipping what it is today. And I would like to particularly thank them. We had a great event yesterday uh, with, of course, uh, at the New York Stock Exchange with Polis. And I have to say that uh, we were really proud of the kind of companies and the quality of companies we have in Cyprus today. And uh, this is something everybody should be proud, and we're really proud of our shipping sector. So during the last few years, we have been much more aggressive in promoting shipping all over the world, I have to say. Um, as a government, we have, uh, shipping has the strong support of the whole of the government, uh, of, the, of course the shipping, the, the finance minister as well. It's always good to have the finance minister on your side, of course. So we have introduced a number of additional incentives, horizontal incentives, which are, of course are directed towards bringing more and more people on the island to do business from Cyprus. And when we introduced some of them, we had shipping in our mind as well. So these, these measures, they, they help to bring additional companies and enlarge uh, the cluster. Regarding specific incentives, of course, for, the, uh, uh, for shipping, what our objective is, is to maintain the current advantages we have. I would just like to remind that we have the only uh, approved uh, tax, uh, tonnage tax system for an open registry within the European Union, and I think this is quite important. Uh, so we have seen a number of horizontal incentives being introduced. Uh, what we, as we have done is that um, as a government, we have um, encouraged the maritime education. This was always a request from the cluster in Cyprus. So, I mean, this year I've been to the uh, inauguration of two maritime academies, and I have to say I'm quite pleased about this as well, because we, we see the introduction of additional uh, technical courses that, of course, will help in the training of people that will work in these shipping companies, because it is a fact that uh, during the last uh, couple of years we've seen a shortage of trained uh, personnel. So as a government we have offered uh, incentives for these uh, people like um, uh, in uh, incentives for cadets, uh, incentives for uh, uh, like uh, sponsorships for these courses and I think this has played its role as well. Um, the other thing I would like to mention is also the intensification of the business development through our regional offices, the hiring of additional people, the introduction of new concepts coming from the private sector. It's always difficult to introduce this kind of uh, basically things when you are in the government. Uh, it's challenging. Uh, the same goes for doing reforms like the commercialization of posts that my colleague mentioned before. But at the end of the day, our job uh, I do believe that our job is not only uh, basically to, uh, as ministers, uh, to run the show, but to do things that change uh, the way business is done in Cyprus. And I think this is a kind of legacy uh, we would like to leave behind as a government. So hopefully we will be re-elected, re of course, in February. But so. Um, I would like also to mention the upgrading of the maritime administration. Uh, this was a, a request uh, from, the, from the industry. We have filed a bill for the creation of a separate deputy ministry for shipping, and this bill is, of course, at the parliament. Hopefully, it will be approved sometime this uh, year. And I do believe that this will assist in upgrading the maritime administration. The other thing I would like to mention is that besides being a maritime uh, or a, a successful shipping center. I believe that Cyprus fulfills all the criteria to become uh, a trade hub in the region. I mentioned before the strategic location. You know, it's always easy for us to mention uh, the strategic location of Cyprus, but it's always more difficult to utilize that strategic location. Um, I do believe that we have the necessary uh, all the ingredients there to exploit uh, our position. As a government, we have proceeded with the commercialization of the largest port. We also have a process, uh, and we brought guys like Eurogate and DP World. And despite all the uh, initiative and problems, in any major change you make, and reforms are always painful at the beginning, uh, we do believe and we're convinced that we're going to see a lot of benefits uh, in the next uh, few years. Um, 
The other thing we're doing, of course, we're doing a process for the second largest port. We do see a lot of interest in our port infrastructure, uh, maybe for the oil and gas sector as well. We see the servicing of the ZO, um, for example, funding from Cyprus, from the port infrastructure in Cyprus. And people always mention things like, do we have enough port infrastructure in Cyprus? We have enough port infrastructure in Cyprus, but we have also identified additional spaces for, and we're proceeding with additional port infrastructure. And I do believe that as a government, always we have to look ahead uh, because we have to plan for all these important uh, developments. So let's see how this industry evolves. And, and of course, I'm convinced that if we have uh, the positive developments world hopeful, we're going to see a lot of changes in the use of infrastructure in Cyprus. Uh, I know that this is a maritime session, but uh, I couldn't resist the temptation of mentioning some things about the aviation sector as well. Uh, George, he mentioned the large increase in the tourist sector, which of course is uh, very true. We have seen a tremendous increase in the aviation sector in Cyprus. I remember when I joined the government back in March 2014, there was a lot of... Um, um, there was a lot of resistance, basically, to make changes. Back then, uh, uh, we used to have a, a company called Cyprus Airways, which belonged to the state, and it was a very badly managed company, and it cost a lot of money for the uh, taxpayers. Uh, in the end, the company, of course, had to close uh, because of the European Union decision. But uh, since then, the aviation sector really opened up, and we've seen a number of new companies being introduced in Cyprus. And some of these companies, uh, they've been financed uh, from all over the world. So this brought a lot of FDI to our country. And this is what we need to do as a country. We need to beat um, whatever misconceptions we have, and we need to open up for FDI because we need FDI. I mean, this is the kind of... Uh, uh, investment we need to, to go ahead as a government. And Cyprus is truly an international place. So we've seen uh, two new companies uh, introduced. One of them is uh, finance from China, the other one from uh, all over the world. And we have a third one, uh, which is uh, finance from uh, uh, the second largest uh, company, uh, East. So we do see a lot of uh, interest in the aviation sector as well. We had an increase in traffic 18% last year which is tremendous. I mean, uh, it used to be 7 million in and out uh, two years ago, is, and now it's almost 10 million. Uh, sorry, 9 million. Uh, hopefully this year it's going to go up to 10 million. Uh, I will not take more of your time because we have, of course, the panel afterwards. But what I really want to say is that Cyprus is back uh, for business. As a government, what we have done I believe uh, successfully is promote Cyprus, show the positive side of Cyprus, especially after the, uh, the unfortunate events of 2013. Um, I have to uh, give a lot of credit for this, of course, to my colleagues at the Council of Ministers. Uh, I think we have a great team. To the Minister of Finance who uh, did well in uh, navigating through all the Troika requirements. Uh, and, of course, to everybody and all the people, George, uh, who is uh, really active, of course, in the tourism and energy sector. And uh, let's hope we enjoy the panel. Thank you very much. While you're all seated, I wanted to say we, we thought of having two different panels, brief panels, exactly to um, underline the diversity and comprehensiveness of the cluster in uh, Cyprus. On one hand, you have the ship owning. On the other hand, you have the ship management and the broader service sector in the cluster. So we thought by having two panels, we can focus better on the diversity and again, the complementarity of what is there in Cyprus. So, and Costas is, uh, I can assure you, an absolutely expert moderator. <laughs> During these uh, last sessions, uh, I will not go and make an introduction about shipping. I think the minister covered us very well. Just very briefly to tell you that I'm a partner in Deloitte, servicing predominantly the shipping industry, currently based in Limassol, and I'm saying currently because I want to make a note, had the president been here, that I'm still dreaming and hope that I will one day relocate to Famagusta. Uh, I am uh, an audit partner, and usually when I'm surrounded by the gentleman that I have on this uh, table, it's questions about vessel impairments, vessel values, but I can tell you this panel is not technical. It will concentrate mainly 
on the attractiveness of Cyprus as a shipping center. A very quick introduction of the three panelists. Their bios are in the brochure handed over, so I will be very quick. On my left-hand side, we have Polis Kachivannu. Polis is the CEO and chairman of Save Balkers Inc. And he's also the vice president of Cyprus Ship Owners Union. Further on, we have Andreas Kajiannis. He is the founder of Cyprus Lines, Cyprus Sea Lines, Cyprus Maritime and Hellenic Tankers. And he is the president of the Cyprus Ship Owners Union. On the far left, we have Aristides Pitas, who is the founder, CEO, and chairman of the board of Eurosys Limited. Let me jump into my questions, and I will pose the first question to Polis, who stands in a fantastic position to give us his account of what Cyprus is like when it comes to shipping. Uh, Polis manages Safe Balkers Inc. now from Cyprus, having relocated recently back in 2015. Safe Balkers, as you know, is US regulated, New York listed. Polis, the floor is yours. Give us your account of what you found in Cyprus and what are the main attractiveness that you have found and you have set up your base in Cyprus now. Thank you, Kostas. Uh, in 2015, uh, we made a decision, like uh, other public listed companies in the beginning of the year, to develop a plan B and open a, 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 a second office somewhere in the, in the world apart from Greece, which was our main office at the time. There were a lot of options and a lot of names came up, like uh, Monaco, Switzerland, Dubai, Singapore, and uh, nobody has in, in, in his mind Cyprus. Uh, when we put Cyprus in the equation, uh, it, uh, it clicked all the, all the boxes and it made absolute sense for the company to put a foot in the, on the island. Uh, I never, at that time, in the beginning of 2015, I never thought that six months later I would follow myself with my family to relocate in the island. So when we moved down there and the office started, I started hearing very positive comments from the people we moved there, 10 people initially. And uh, we saw that uh, things were done in a professional way, in, uh, in a very efficient way. The banking system was performing, was working. And when, when we came and we reached the, the, the capital controls in June 2015 in Greece, I posed myself a question, you know, are capital controls here for one month, for two months, for three months? Why don't we go as well with the family in Cyprus and see how things go? And you know, the easier decision is to come back to Greece if, uh, if this is, was the wrong decision. What I found in Cyprus, I found a country that was oh, very, very friendly and very safe for my family. And this was very important because when you have five kids and four of them are teenagers, you, you, you want them to live in a, in a safe environment where you will feel that they will feel that they are free. They are free to go out, they are free to go with their friends, go to the restaurant, go to, the, to a club, go to, to the cinemas, without worrying that uh, you will lose them somewhere in a huge uh, city. So when uh, we relocated there, uh, all the families start becoming uh, very happy and uh, with the move. And I would say that uh, I was very positively surprised. We enjoy, we enjoy uh, winter times like, like uh, is uh, summer in other places in, of Europe. And uh, definitely for me it was uh, the right option. Thank you, Paulis. Thank you very much. Andreas, I'm turning over to you now. I know that you wanted me to ask you questions about the market, <laughs> but I will resist that for the time being. Right. Can you please give us your perspective of how you found Cyprus in terms of operating as a ship owner and as a user of the Cyprus flag? Well, I think Paul has already covered the first part of the questions. <laughs> so 
no point of repeating okay. all of the good advantages of living in Cyprus. Can you comment about the services uh, well, you receive from uh, the merchant shipping department? Can yeah, you? Yes, of course, yes. Now, Cyprus registry is open registry. The Honourable Minister covered that angle. But it's also, it's got also a unique advantage. Cyprus is also a national flag. This is because a large part of the owners that use the registry are Cypriot owners or Cypriot tax residents, which is very unique. That is called a very big additional value to your flag. It's you are received in the countries apart from the forums, the, the, the international forums, or so, sorry, in the countries, in the ports, with additional respect. You are not just another flag of convenience. It's, it's a genuine national flag. With the, with all respect to the other open registries, for us Cypriots, shipping and ships is part of our culture through the centuries. So the, uh, uh, um, uh, the government officials, from the ministers down to the civil servants, they know their subject. They understand shipping. They understand the importance of time and timing. And it's also in their culture to cut corners and help. That's very unique. I had the opportunity or the disadvantage to have to use many other flags apart from shipping. That's because of problems with uh, Turkey or because of uh, uh, we do various um, cabotage trades in various parts of the world. So we know the difference. The only comparable flag I found when it comes to terms of uh, efficiency is the British flag. But of course it's dearly expensive. <laughs> so Cyprus, a part of being a very competitive um, uh, when it comes to tonnage taxes and registration fees, <coughs> is also very efficient and a real added value to the owners. That's why Cyprus has a great, great future. And with the determination of the Cyprus administration, Cyprus government, and its people, the whole, the whole uh, uh, um, participants from uh, the government to the political parties, they're all committed. It seems they all have a dream. They want Cyprus to be a leading or the major trading um, shipping center, but also the, get the biggest part of the registration in the world. So we're very, very optimistic. Thank you, Andreas. Thank you very much. Turning over to you now, Aristides. I know you stand further apart from the two Cypriots on the panel here and perhaps you are more independent to give us your opinion of what you think Cyprus compared to other maritime hubs, and what is it that we hear about Cyprus, and what is it that will make you to, what is it that will take you to move to Cyprus and relocate like the two gentlemen over here? Yes, well firstly I've already become a resident of Cyprus since last December myself, having set up a family office there, having moved to Cyprus in Limassol and uh, spending a lot of time over there. Our main operations as a shipping company are still done out of Greece, that's where they have been traditionally done and being Greek I was very happy in doing that. But uh, forming a bigger company, growing the company, becoming listed in the public markets here in the United States and being involved in a truly international business 
you have to put your foot on some other places as well that are very relevant to shipping and very relevant to your own personal well-being. So we have uh, opened up, apart from a very small office here in the United States where with our CFO who lives here, an office in Shanghai, uh, an office in the Philippines. Uh, when the problem started happening in Greece, we, th we said we need to have an alternative plan, possibly, if things deteriorate there, but which is still in, within the European Union, within the network that we've been used to, to, to be operating by. And we were looking at all the places that uh, have shipping as a major uh, part of, of their, of their you know, business. Uh, and uh, we looked at uh, England, we looked at Switzerland, we looked at Dubai, we looked at Singapore, we looked at all these places. The better of all of them was Cyprus at the end of the day, for various reasons. Uh, the fact that uh, it's close to Greece, it's have a, it has a very nice weather, it's uh, a very international all of these were very important aspects that made us look very favorable into Cyprus. And then when I decided to move here, to move there, move in Cyprus, because I really liked the place, uh, and I've been totally impressed uh, with the way that the whole uh, structure works, the way that you have a government that you feel is a partner, the way that everybody feels uh, very businesslike, and things have been uh, regulated in such a way that uh, people can live safely and happily, but also can conduct business through that place. So I have very few reservations, uh, actually no reservations, that uh, Cyprus is a great place where you can operate a shipping company from. We are still having our main office uh, in, uh, in Greece, but uh, it in the near future, we might have some more initiatives, more, act more activities done through Cyprus. Thank you, Aristides. Thank you for this complete account of your um, perception about Cyprus. Paulis, let me turn over to you again. And can you please give us your opinion as to what additional measures or incentives you would like the government to introduce in order to make Cyprus even more attractive to the investors in shipping? I think all the basic uh, things were done in 2015 when uh, the government and President Anastasiadis um, in an effort to attract uh, foreign business, businessmen and foreign businesses in Cyprus offered the, the non-domicile uh, uh, opportunity to foreign, uh, foreign businessmen. Uh, when we when we heard about this uh, as a union of uh, Cyprus ship owners, we approached uh, the government and we asked them, "Okay, you are making this very well for the German, for the Russian, for the British. What about the Cypriots? Are you going to do it for the Cypriots?" Immediately, President Anastasiadis said that, "Of course, I will do it for the Cypriots who reside overseas uh, or all their." Life and the criterion was the last 20 years where, where if you were an outside resident. And he immediately offered this opportunity to, to Cypriots residing in other countries of the world to come back and bring their base down in the island. This was the only thing that we wanted and the only thing we are asking. And since we have it and shipping, it's ship owners, we, we are running our business. We can run it from anywhere in the world. Our ships are in the oceans, they are not in the country. It's a win-win it's, it's a situation to have in the country the ship owners who are not asking anything, they are not polluting, they are, don't, they are not be, uh, bringing a factor in the island, and they are running their business from, uh, from an office in Cyprus. Yes. So I think what we have right now, it's almost perfect, we don't need changes, and it's good to know that uh, shipping companies in Greece, they have a plan B if they want to open a second office and to have another foot somewhere in the world, that Cyprus is the first option. It's amazing the number of calls. 
I received from fellow ship owners from Greece that they are calling me to check out the conditions, the living standards, the schools that my kids, I have five kids in three different schools in Limassol. The standard is, has nothing to envy schools in Greece. They are the same quality. And yeah. I have even a kid in a public school. Simply because elementary schools, we don't have private, but I tried the public school and the standard is as good as the private schools. So when you have safe, you have safety, you feel your kids are safe. You know their education level will not be uh, under, undermined. And, uh, and you have for your business uh, uh, an environment that you can concentrate and develop, especially in shipping that is so dynamic and you know that we enjoy sometimes very big profits and two or three good years. And then we have six or seven years that we have to fight and we have to be uh, concentrated and we have to not to have external distractions of how we do our business and how we, we manage our business. So for me, tick, tick uh, all the boxes and, you know, I'm, I'm uh, very, very open to invite other entrepreneurs, other ship owners from all over the world to try the, the Cyprus uh, success story. Thank you, Polis. Thank you very much. You are a great ambassador for Cyprus. <laughs> Thank you. Andreas, do you have anything to add to what Polis yeah, has only, said? Only, can you also only concentrate to those things. nice to have things? Yes. that you would like to be introduced to make life easier. Exactly. There is no end to cutting uh, bureaucracy. All right. But the minister himself came up with a great idea to have the one-stop shop. Yeah. So he's working on that, and we're all working on that. Now, there is also one additional uh, good thing that is happening in Cyprus. We all work together. From the president down to the last civil servant to the owners, with open uh, ears and open mind to find what is best right, and what is compliant with all these new regulations that the uh, uh, bankers talked about us before. Right. So it's not just a matter of uh, asking for something. It's just a matter of, it's a matter of inventive, the right recipes yes. <laughs> that suits everybody. And you always remain compliant with the U.S. regulations, with the, with the uh, United uh, Europe, with the e e EU, EU, regulations. EU regulations, with the IMO, with everything. So there is no end to the progress. But we have a good working team together. Good. And that's bringing results. Thank you very much, Andreas. Uh, Aristides, I will come over to you right now. And uh, you stand further apart and said, is it everything so nicely set in Cyprus? Is there something that we need to correct, put right, be truthful about it? <laughs> No, that's, that's true. Uh, I said I've been very impressed. Uh, one thing that I felt was maybe missing, but I see that already uh, Minister Dimitriadis uh, has addressed that, has been that of uh, maritime specialists and of training people to help this expanding business, because it's expanding very quickly, the ship owning uh, part through Cyprus. There used to be for many years the German big offices there, so there is some expertise, but I always felt, you know, it will be difficult to find new people to work with you. But, you know, everything I think about has already been thought about, and it's been thought about not only because the government thinks on its own, but it works very closely with the industry exactly. to, to, to find out, you know, what are the problems and try to solve them. And so I feel comfortable that, you know, even this lack of maybe specialized people will soon be, you know, is already addressed and will provide uh, very positive uh, results. Thank you very much, uh, Aristides. I think time is running out for this panel, but I cannot resist not to ask the question about the markets <laughs> and, whether, and whether you will be investing in 
save Palkers. <laughs> the other day on the other panel, Aristide said that he would buy the stuff. <laughs> would you? I've already done so. <laughs> <laughs> but I will, I will continue. I will continue. We, we've turned the bottom, as we say, in, uh, in business. And I think it's real. The, the recovery of the market is real. It will be slow, but it's real. Good. So there will be no impairments. <laughs> 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 Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We've heard the ship owner's perspective. We have now a new panel, and um, we will talk about the wider cluster ship management services, and even um, um, wider than that, from the um, uh, services, uh, the suppliers. We have two young, dynamic executives to tell us, uh, um, uh, to give us their account of what Cyprus has to offer. We have on my left Andreas Kajibetru, Managing Director of Columbia Ship Management. And uh, we have also Despina Panayotu Theodosiu, Joint Managing Director of Tototheo Group. And uh, allow me also to say that uh, um, uh, Despina is also the chairwoman of uh, the Dynamic Association. Um, established recently in Cyprus, WISTA International, and not only, she's also the secretary of the International, of the International Association. So, um, um, welcome on this panel. Uh, Andreas, let me turn over to you first. And um, 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 you, you represent Columbia Ship Management, a company that has set foot in Cyprus almost 30 years ago. It has grown to become one of the biggest ship management companies in the world, and not only. Can you please give us your experience and your account, the significant milestones during this period that uh, set Columbia to establish food and stay for so long in Cyprus? Thank you, Costa. I mean, after Mr. Hadjouanou said that Cyprus ticks all the boxes, what is that really for me <laughs> to say? So, uh, I think historically what, what one should know is that the government and the private sector have always really been working together to, um, to come today to an environment which is so attractive for um, pretty much all shipping companies to operate out of, of the island. But in the recent history, what, what happened is that in the 1970s, uh, quite a number of German uh, individuals came to Cyprus and they opened crewing offices, really, to manage, uh, to do crew management. And that's when it all started uh, in the beginning. And the, ba the basis for that, to be honest, it was just uh, they, they were enjoying the offshore status, paying a very, a very low taxation of 4.5%. And this helped uh, the market grow in Cyprus doing crew management. Then in the 1980s, uh, we had um, the start of technical operations. Maybe that was even a bit earlier. And the growth of, uh, of the local market, but as well as the Cyprus registry. Then through the years, uh, with the government support as well, additional companies came to the island, so the entire cluster uh, uh, expanded. And then we had a number of uh, ship suppliers, a number of uh, a, a good expertise on accounting firms and so on. And in 2004, we joined the European Union, and we have a reform of the, of the taxation. And at the same time, in 2003, 2004, there was a threat for Cyprus because of the German tonnage tax system which was implemented at the time. Um, however, uh, despite the fact that there was an incentive from the German government to attract the German interests, the Cyprus-based uh, cluster remained uh, strong and we didn't really lose uh, the numbers of ships we were expecting to lose. And that was actually a proof that the foreign people who came to Cyprus, they, they came to Cyprus really to stay. Um, then in 2010, we had the, the European Union um, uh, been approving our tonnage tax system, which is uh, valid today, and it's, uh, it's covering 
owning, chartering and management services and this is really the basis for, for operating out of, uh, of the island. And then in 2013 we had the crisis and uh, a number of uh, uh, people and companies lost uh, money because of the haircut uh, of, the, of the earnings. And what happened at the time, there was again a big threat that companies will leave the island. And uh, actually a couple of companies did uh, take steps to move out of, of Cyprus. But they came back, Andreas. And they came back. <laughs> and what happened really, we had a jump and we had additional measures by the government to attract foreign investors and ship owners and so on. And on this basis, with the government support, um, the, the cluster was ex expanded, expanded even further. So what we can say is that the way of reaching a status of Mr. Poli sitting here and saying um, uh, Cyprus ticks all, all the boxes is not really um, something which happened spontaneously. This is something that happened historically through the times and I think this is very important for anybody who likes to come to Cyprus. They should know that Cyprus is not is a, is an attractive center, not only the last two, three years, but it's been attractive for the last 30, 40 years. And, it's, it, and the target of all the players really is to grow the market and make sure that we are hist historically and as well in the future very competitive. Uh, Andreas, it is true to say that uh, initially these German companies were attracted by the low taxation and the very beneficial double tax treaty. But is taxation the only reason that these companies have now rooted in Cyprus? What about the resources that are available to them? What about the infrastructure in general? Can you give us very brief um, your account of this? I, I tried not to repeat what Minister yeah. said earlier and so on, but I mean, the, the shipping community today in Cyprus consists of about 200 shipping companies or shipping related companies. We have 20% of the third party managed uh, ships operated out of, of Cyprus. Uh, about 4,500 people working in the shipping companies and uh, 50, 50, estimated 55,000 seafarers sailing on board ships that are managed uh, out of Cyprus. So, uh, this shows, these numbers show that there is expertise on the expertise island, on the there is commitment. Yes, the tax is important, but uh, overall it's the entire cluster which is uh, supporting uh, this, uh, this environment. Time is running out very quickly, so let me turn over to Despina. Despina, you are representing the wider spectrum of the cluster, the service industry to the ship managers and the ship owners. Can you please tell us what is available in Cyprus in terms of services to the ship owners and the ship managers? Of course. Um, the Cyprus shipping activity consists of an extended ra range uh, of services supported by excellent infrastructure, uh, administrative uh, bodies, and a wide range of other supportive services. Cyprus managed to attract uh, many shipping entrepreneurs and to develop the country into a fully developed uh, maritime center. A maritime center that is competitive and modern and actually competing on a global scale. Uh, clusters are, are of importance in terms of knowledge sharing and innovation cooperation. And the Cyprus Maritime Cluster is a result of never-ending and organized, this is very important, uh, organized efforts by the government and the private sector to increase our competitiveness and growth. We have a range of services uh, offered in and out of Cyprus, and apart from the ship management services, uh, we have uh, suppliers, communication, IT, insurance brokers, uh, consultants, surveyors, banking services. We have a whole wide range of services. Accountants. 
accountants, of course, and legal services, uh, lately ship financing. And as the uh, uh, minister mentioned before, very recently, um, the regulatory authorities uh, have uh, approved the operating license of uh, um, the first marine insurance uh, company to be based in Cyprus. The name was mentioned before. Uh, it's the American Hellenic Hall Insurance Company. And actually discussing with executives from the mother company, which is regulated in New York, they told me uh, how impressed they were with the, with the knowledge of the regulators and their willingness to work with them to, to obtain the license. It is very important to send the message that owners and managers that are interested to invest or move to Cyprus will have all the services uh, and support they need locally. But we should also emphasize that many of the shipping related companies that operate in Cyprus have the technical knowledge, the capacity and the capabilities to operate on a, on a global level and on major scale. Uh, therefore ensuring that their customers are supported 24-7. Um, Cyprus offers, of course, the environment for companies to grow. It was mentioned before. It's a strategic location, the infrastructure, uh, the human talent, which is very important. Um, there is a transparent and uncomplicated uh, legal framework and the uh, attractive uh, tax regime, of course. Uh, but that's not only for the shipping companies, but for all companies, like uh, shipping-related companies like ours. All these advantages compared with the resident shipping industry uh, community have allowed uh, the maritime cluster to grow and uh, shipping related services to be on an advanced level. Uh, actually, um, I'm speaking for, uh, from experience because our group of companies was established in Cyprus um, and is still headquartered in Cyprus, but we are growing in many different locations around the world. Um, and we have developed and grown into uh, one major uh, satellite maritime communications company uh, globally. And it was Cyprus that offered us the perfect setting uh, for us to grow our business and, and allowed us to create the resources and the capacity to compete uh, equally on the international level. Very good. Thank you very much, Despina. Andreas, um, we've, got, we've only got a couple of minutes. Can you please let me know what has been the involvement and whether you are happy with the involvement of the public sector in the promotion of the industry in the um, um, wider region? And not only we are here in the US, are you happy with the promotion that takes place? Well, the nickname of our minister is Super Mario. <laughs> <laughs> because he's been around everywhere really promoting and he's been really active supporting the shipping communities. What we do indeed is uh, we work very closely together. Uh, even now there is a study which uh, covers the competitiveness of the Cyprus flag and uh, which has been carried out by a reputable uh, uh, auditing firm, not, not Deloitte unfortunately. <laughs> and through this study we are working together very closely to make sure that we improve what is already innovative and state of the art to become even better. Because, you know, we aim for continuous improvement and this is, this goes along the board. Okay. That's when you have the last word of this okay. panel now. What is it that's missing? What service is it that is missing? Um, is there something that we need to work on? Um, I, I wouldn't say that something is missing. We should never think like that. Uh, on the contrary, we should think what we can do to enhance and improve. Um, it's very important to say, I, I'm not sure if it was mentioned before by the minister, but, but uh, uh, shipping contributes around 7% uh, to our GDP, so it's, it's one of the pillars of our, of our economy. And yes, of course, there are difficulties as well. Um, we have to mention the global crisis in our industry that is still ongoing and of course uh, the Turkish ban to our uh, Cyprus flagged vessels. Um, however, the prospects for uh, the further development of Cyprus shipping are there. If someone looks at the opportunities for attracting uh, even more high quality shipping companies um, from, for example, neighboring countries, uh, whether uh, these are for reasons of political instability or other economic and tax uh, reasons, 
uh, we are in a position to offer a very competitive operational framework in Cyprus. Uh, as for measures, uh, again, the minister before mentioned the, the position of the uh, deputy minister or the undersecretary for shipping. Um, this is a clear message of support from the government to our sector. We have been very fortunate because our minister and, and the ministry with the Department of Merchant Shipping uh, have made it a priority for them to promote and support our industry. And, uh, and creating this position is just the government showing the support to do something extra, to support us even more. Um, so we believe that the Deputy Ministry will give us the flexibility um, and allow us uh, to create growth strategies to imp be implemented that correspond to the needs and the international character of our industry. Despina, thank you very much. Uh, I think half of the room has already left, went for lunch. <laughs> I see in your faces that you are eagerly awaiting to join them. I'm sorry, Richard, no time for any questions. On the next session, perhaps you have the opportunity. Thank you very much for listening to us.